Hey everyone, it's me, Rylan. Um, so today is Monday, October 21st, 2019, and it is 1.28 p.m. Um, I know that it has been a long time since I've made a video, um, but I've just been busy with life, uh, mostly taking care of my mental health, honestly. That's been a really big reason why I haven't been making videos because I have been making that a priority. Um, so yeah, and I also felt like, you know, I don't make videos just to talk. I make videos when I feel that I have something to say. Um, I don't think of myself as like a YouTuber where like I need to constantly upload content to keep people engaged. That's not, that's not why I have a channel. I have a channel because I feel that I have something to say and I like to create discussions, but especially when it comes to like the two main things that I talk about, which are mental health and, um, like transgender issues or whatever is to inform people and provide resources. So today's topic that I wanted to talk about is the movie Joker starring Joaquin Phoenix. Um, it just hit theaters I, either last week or the week before. Honestly don't remember, but like super, super soon ago. Uh, and, um, I will be honest, I saw the trailer for it when I was watching a different movie. What movie did I go to see? Um, I saw Once, a Time, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I saw the commercial, the trailer for Joker and I was like, this looks so stupid. Like had no interest at all. And then I was hearing from people that it was actually pretty good. People were saying like it was the best movie of the year, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And I'm not one to like necessarily like fall for like, oh, it's the greatest movie in the world type stuff. But real talk is because of one of my side hustles, um, one of the perks is that I can get AMC gift certificates and each gift certificate is like their gift cards are for $15. Um, and I go with my girlfriend for matinees and those tics tickets are either $6 or $8. So I can get us in to see movies for like $12, which is fantastic because a regular ticket in New York is $15. So I'm able, I like have the privilege to actually see movies. If I wasn't a part of Backstage and doing this ambassador program that I'm a part of, like I wouldn't be seeing any movies. So just like to clarify, I'm still poor as a bitch. But I was lucky enough to see this movie simply because people were talking about that it was a good movie and that there may be some aspects of mental health. And me being a mental health whore, I was like, I need to see this movie. So we got up yesterday, uh, something unfortunate happened that was very upsetting to me. Uh, just um, someone stayed at my house and like ruined, um, like they soiled some of my linens. Uh, which was really frustrating because now I have to replace them. So I was in a horrible mood, like low key state of crisis, but that's not what I'm talking about. So this is gonna contain spoilers. So I know I'm like 50,000 minutes into this video, but it's gonna contain uh, some spoilers. So stop watching if you haven't seen it or watch it if, you want to know the spoilers because they do have to do with mental health or whatever. Just live your best life, okay? Here we go. So, the Joker. Overall, and like I'm going to stick with this overall opinion, is that it was fantastic. It's starring the one and only Joaquin Phoenix. You might know him by playing Johnny Cash and Walk the Line. Or like a low-key um, reference that you might know him as is he plays the brother in Signs. So that's exciting because um, that's how I was first introduced to Joaquin's work is seeing signs and I had no idea how good of an actor he was until I saw like a couple other movies of his and realized like, okay, 
why were you in signs in the first place? But I digress. So the movie was absolutely incredible. Um, I don't even know if I can give a synopsis of it. I mean, obviously the Joker is based off of the DC uh, comic, The Joker, which has been around like since forever. I think the most prominent uh, time in society that we can think of it is Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, The Dark Knight Rises back in 2008, 2008. Yeah, 2008. Holy shit, that was a long time ago. Uh, so he played the Joker, and that was like revolutionary because everyone, unfortunately, he had passed away at that time and won the Best Actor Award posthumously. But, um, you know, that was like an amazing performance because he just really went for it. Um, and people were blown away. And then we look at Joaquin's performance in this movie, which was just so beautiful and specific and not a cartoon character at all because this is the way now this is where it's going to get into my opinions i'm not saying that this is what the movie set out to say or do in any way and i've even read articles from joaquin uh and the director i'm forgetting his name Lee, Lee something of them saying that this wasn't necessarily the direction that they were going. But I personally view this movie as um, a mental health movie, a, a view, a portrait of, he's not young, but I'll say a young man's, a middle-aged man's struggle with mental illness. And he just happens to be a famous comic book character that has been around for ages and has different iterations of people playing him Heath Ledger Jack Nicholson Mark Hamill on the uh, cartoon character but I look at this as purely a mental health movie because yeah I guess basically the whole plot is about I'm just gonna refer to him as a young man, even though he's probably like 35 in the movie, which is young. Um, a young man who uh, essentially, we start off with him like in a social worker's office and he's just kind of talking about that he's sad. Blah, 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 events happen. He ends up being taken off of his meds. He says earlier that he's on seven different medications. We know from the minute that we see this human on screen that there's something off about him, that he's not, you can tell that there's something going on with in there and that he's not necessarily neurotypical. And for those of you that don't watch my videos, I want you to know that this is coming from a person that has multiple mental illness uh, diagnoses. None of them are self-diagnosed. Like, I would like to clarify that I, unfortunately, uh, have to say that I am severely mental Ill, mentally ill as well. So, watching this movie was really eye-opening and beautiful, and that's why I'm making this video, because what I'm curious is, the different lenses that people are gonna view this movie as. So back to the plot. Basically, he ends up, and it's very small, they just like glaze over this, that he can't take his meds anymore. Then he ends up, like the whole body count of the movie is seven on screen and one off screen, which is to be implied. Um, and, just go, and just ends up like murdering people. But what I wonder is because of the extent of his physicalization and everything that he did character work wise is the lenses that people are viewing this as. I want to know the people that struggle with mental illness, how this movie came off to them, if they sympathize with Joker. 
Um, if they sympathize with him and they see that this is a person who is greatly struggling with mental illness and, you know, essentially doesn't have any control over their actions. I want to know about the people that are neurotypical and are not necessarily fans of the comic, but people that are neurotypical and just going in to see a movie that they heard a lot of great things about. What are they thinking? Are they sympathizing with this character? Are they seeing him as a villain? Are people viewing him as a villain? Are they just like, oh shit, this guy's really bad. He's fucking killed a lot of people and he's weird. Are there people saying he's just crazy, he's a fucking psycho, murdering people? Like that's kind of the same as what I said just like five seconds ago, but the question is where is the sympathy? And then what about the people that are the big comic book buffs and know the Joker and know you know, his backstory and all of that stuff. Are they just looking at this as an incredible representation of who the Joker is and something they've been hungry and waiting for and just see him as the Joker? Like, we know that this is his through line. We know that he ends up killing uh, Bruce Wayne's parents and that's where the rivalry between the Joker and Batman starts. And they're just like, Yahoo! <laughs> now me... I look at this as a great character study of someone that has, um, I'm not going to diagnose him and Joaquin even went to say in multiple, uh, interviews that he, you know, did enough research on the character that he wanted to leave it so ambiguous and essentially intertwined a lot of a lot of disorders to the point that he like quote didn't want like a psychologist to be able to narrow down, narrow down a diagnosis for him but it is clear that obviously there's something mentally going on with him if you were to break it down from a layman's perspective you know that he's experiencing psychosis and hallucinations just based on the fact that he had an imaginary relationship with someone which falls into both, like psychosis and hallucinations because he's imagining that there was a girl with him the whole time and that he had a relationship with her. And there's a lot of um, personality traits that would point to kind of a schizoaffective, and sch like schizoaffective schizophrenia, um, kind of in that, in that area versus like bipolar or something like that. It's, it's more on that end of like the psychosis um, chain level spectrum, spectrum. Um, uh, and also like trigger warning to people that do want to watch this movie and know about mental health or struggle with mental health. There are elements of self-harm. He particularly um, is someone that engages in banging, which is the banging of body parts against a wall in this case he bangs his head against the wall and I know to some people that think of self-harm they think that's only someone cutting themselves there are many ways in which people can self-harm there's something called trickle telemania in which people pull out their hair one by one there's banging which can be banging body parts there is um, picking at your skin there's there's cutting there's a lot of ways that people hurt themselves in order to cope because they don't have the skills to do anything they don't know. And this is speaking from personal experience um, as someone that is in recovery uh, of self-harm. But I'm just really curious to know how people outside of the mental health community are viewing this character. Because to me, what I'm seeing on screen is a man who is severely mentally ill, was taken off his meds, on top of already struggling with things, but then was taken off of his meds and then by circumstance, whether it was being like literally beat up in the streets and like physically assaulted, um, in which that's unfortunately like when his first crime began, I just see a young person who is really grappling with a very difficult mental illness because psychosis, uh, that's some hard shit to deal with. That's difficult. And again, speaking from personal experience. So I have a lot of sympathy for this character and I don't view them as a villain. I don't view them as 
bad? Do I view them as good? I wouldn't say that I can say I view them as good or bad, but I don't, I'm not judging him is basically what I'm saying. I'm not seeing it, this as the comic book villain that we know the Joker to be. The way that they framed this movie to me is to show an unrelenting portrait of someone that is extremely sick. Now, I do not think that that was necessarily their intention of making this movie. Read some articles and you know, maybe a little bit they are kind of going in that direction because they did mention a lot that they didn't want to tell like the normal narrative of the Joker and blah, blah, blah. But I was just blown away at how accurate of a depiction I think this is of someone that really struggles with their mental health and then on top of it is not getting the care that they need. Because one of the things in the beginning, which again, if you're not a part of the mental health community, I don't think you would really pay attention to this. But... He says he's on seven meds. He's seen the social worker who just doesn't give a shit. And then he's taken off his meds. Those three things, someone that's not really attuned to the mental health community might just really brush those off and not put any weight or stock into how that could affect someone's mental health. They might just be like, oh, okay, those words happened and let's continue with the movie. Whereas if you are a little more informed, you would know that something like that for a person that we've already seen as sick, how greatly impactful that would be on their lives. So I'm just really moved by it. It was uncomfortable to watch in some moments because I was just seeing someone that was so sick um, and just doing their best to get by. Uh, and also I'll wrap up by saying I find it frustrating that there are people behind me that were laughing at some points in the movie. It bothered my girlfriend more than it bothered me, but I find it really frustrating that there were people that were laughing during the movie. I had a friend of mine that saw the movie at a different time and was saying that people were like yelling out slurs and being very inappropriate. So there's nothing funny about this movie as far as I'm concerned. This is not a comedy. This is a heavy movie. There, I, honestly, there's there's no laughs in this for me. I, there, there's no fucking part of this that this is funny. When you look at it, when you look at it from the, in the lens of this is a person that is struggling with mental illness, nothing about this movie is funny. No matter what way it was edited, even a specific scene I can think to in the way that they cut it, it could be looked at as like, oh, that's funny. I don't think this is a comedy and had one funny moment in the whole two hours and two minutes that this movie existed on screen. So I'm going to wrap up. I hope you're still with me. I hope you're still with me um, because I do want to know. I want to know um, what people's takeaways were with this, but specifically, yeah, in the lens of like, do people have sympathy for him? Do people just see him as the DC comic book villain? Do people see him as someone that is mentally ill? I wanna know, I really wanna know because I have strong feelings about it and you know, I know that this movie has broken box office records already um, and all of our lives experiences affect how we view the world. So I'm curious to know if you saw this movie, what you thought, if you're gonna see the movie based on what I said, anything. Just let me know. Let's have a dialogue and thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.